Morning, everybody. Hello, Chloe. Morning. You're off to school today, aren't you? Yeah. So yesterday, um, Phoebe was playing with a fidget spinner, and Chloe was like, oh, I want to play with mine. And what's happened to yours? It was broken. It was broken. So I go out to a couple of shops in my hometown that would normally sell fidget spinners. In fact, they've now got some weird gummy thing, which seems to be the in thing. And she's like, surely you can make me one, Daddy. And I wasn't planning on doing this video today, but I want to try, OK? okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to make one out of wood, okay, because I'm putting it on my YouTube channel. We're going to do something foodie with it, all right? So hopefully it will still work, all right? Uh, so it might look like that at the end. You go to school, and I'll try and do you a fidget spinner. Is that fair? Yeah, only if it can spin. Behold, folks, the humble fidget spinner. But very quickly, more importantly than that, Postman just knocked at the door and said, oh, I've seen your videos on YouTube, mate. Nice show, keep it up. Thanks, mate. Didn't catch your name, but, um, well, maybe see you tomorrow. <laughs> and randomly, this has just arrived. Literally, I don't know who sent me this. Um, your never ending personal pugnacious fan club. A pack of pugs is called a grumble. It's a pug thing. Well, there we go. Thanks for that. I might wear that in a future video. I don't know where that's come from. I'll have to check my emails and stuff. Anyhow, I had a tweet uh, from a chap called Sydney RD6. Uh, it's a tasty recipe video where they make fidget spinners like this. I'm going to keep it rolling uh, because there is a scene at the end where it's that classic thing on a video like this where they're like, it looks okay, and then it spins phenomenally. Uh, but we are going to try and make edible cookies and this is a barry tries video this series which i try recipes like this here we go look it's spinning that looks rubbish and now i'm sure watch 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 look at this spin on this one come in here it comes here it comes watch this <laughs> they totally cheated that shot i might do that at the end anyway the recipe the base for these cookies is very similar to uh, custard creams and chocolate bourbons as well it's a it's a little bit you have to manipulate it a bit but it's so simple this dough is temperamental. This is some plain flour. You need to keep it cool. That's why I'm saying temperamental. It's really easy and flexible. We do loads of stuff with it. About a third's worth of caster sugar compared to your flour. Pinch of salt. Push in some butter. Now this is not what I would normally add uh, to the basic biscuit base mixture recipe. This is cream cheese, which is going to make it slightly wetter. And last but not least is your flavouring of choice. I mean, with the custard creams, you add custard powder, but this is just some vanilla extract. You can go crazy and add any extract you want. With the butter, you know, with it being room temperature like that, it does start to form clumps, which is good but you really need to break it down further and you, know, you can keep stirring it. You can do this in a food processor if you want. I'm quite happy with how mine's turned out, but it's still a teeny bit tacky. So what I'm gonna do is just roll it in some flour just to dry it out the sides. If you find that when you're making it, um, that it's a bit crumbly still, just add a teeny bit more water. I'd rather you add more water than cream cheese. I know this isn't my recipe, but that's what I would do. There we go. You can see it's a bit smooth now, how that flour's sort of filled in the edges as well. It's so important that we chill it. Ratmaster 3000. And for those of you that have been following for a long time, that is the first time we've changed the roll in the Ratmaster 3000 when we use it absolutely loads. So shaping this dough now would be way too temperamental. By sticking it in the fridge, it's gonna help it hold its shape so we can get that fidget spinner on there. I hope. Give it about half an hour. All right, can you hear the difference? Nice good old chill on there has made it stronger. I've got a chopping board here, and this is just personal preference. I've got some baking parchment down on it. Apparently I'm not gonna need all of it though. Basically, a, a fidget spinner, not that I take them apart to pick on my children, and I'm not saying I broke Chloe's, honest. You've got your little hole bit in the middle, which we'll use, and you've got the main fidget spinner bit. Now I am just gonna make that just a teeny bit thinner. Although it's going to make it delicate, and this does bake really quickly, I feel like it's critical in making this thing spin. Run your knife around the edge of the fidget spinner. Can you see that? Now this should just lift out. Oh, there we go. Now I might just try and pull this away a little bit. Just to show you this first one, look at that. And place it onto my lined baking tray. So I've got to do lots of these, and then you can get the center of the fidget spinner. Okay, 
This is the benefit, like I said, of having the baking parchment underneath, it makes it so much easier to handle. Well, hey, you see that? So with that spare bit of dough that we cut off at the bit, I've just flattened it, but it's way thicker than the other bits. This is a straw because you can't replicate bearings. What you do is you create a sort of spindle, a little plug uh, that goes between the circles. <laughs> there we go. So that will actually bake quicker than the other bits. So you need to bear that in mind. But that is gonna hold and hopefully spin these cookies together. Repeat all these steps, bearing in mind the middle bit, the smaller bit, thicker dough. Okay, so I've done six and I'm happy with that. I've got enough to probably make, I don't know, maybe about 20 if I want, but I'm just gonna concentrate on these. The caps are done as well and the pegs, they're actually quite thin because it tells you to use a straw. You get a thicker piece of dough. So what you might see is the first one I did, the hole up there is massive. So that should definitely spin, but it's almost too big. So what I did was use the straw rather than the actual outline of the fidget spinner just to cut a shape that the pegs should fit in fairly neatly. Now the lengths of the pegs, I'm not too sure what's gonna work. So I've actually done quite a selection, but I've made the dough thicker, as I say, uh, and what you do, you just push your straw in like that. And I'm finding that a bamboo skewer, just with a teeny bit of encouragement, doo -doo -doo, just pops out like that. Now, if you wanted to make a longer one, you just sort of push it in once. It took me about 10 minutes to work this out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what do I do? And you just literally push it in again. And it's kind of like one of those old school pens where the crayons and all that get pushed along and you choose which color you want, remember those? But to be honest, as long as I get one, I'm gonna have a happy kid. All right, I've actually put the tray back in there. I'm doing that because generally, like when I made the custard creams, to keep that indentation, if you chill it first, it doesn't misshape and warp and form. And we kind of, well, we really want to keep that fidget spinner shape. The video didn't tell me to do that, but I am. I'm going to chill it for about 15 minutes in the fridge, straight in the oven, and it only needs about 15 minutes. The pegs, probably five. All right, this is not going to take long. You don't want to brown them. No, no, no. Ugh. So this is icing sugar, but not just use standard icing sugar. This is royal icing sugar that generally tends to contain more egg white. Wow, it is blowing a gale out there. It contains more egg white, so you kind of get that nice sort of harder set. Once it does set, you have to let it dry. So we just all we do, add 80 mils of water to 500 grams of it. You can whisk it with an electric whisk. It will go everywhere. I like to use a spatula. And I do like to get this going a bit earlier because it gives it a chance to kind of like be less moist and kind of dry out a little bit here. You see how it's kind of going gummy in the middle like this? That's what we want, but just pull it up to the side so it catches any bits on the edge there. If it is too dry though, you can, oi! <laughs> you can always add more water, but you really want to do that as a last resort. Otherwise you start adding more water, then you're like, oh, I need to add more icing sugar. And you just go around in circles. Oh. <laughs> ah, it's, it's in there, it's like the Titanic. Come on now. Oh dear, right. Once it gets to this stage, this is where the electric whisk or just a hand whisk would generally help more than a, a spatula with its head coming off continually. But you're just trying to stir out these lumps, okay? Yeah, so the bulk of it is gonna be white anyway, so we might as well just put just some of the white on its own. That's gonna be way enough, because that'll be for the caps, okay? But of course you could decorate this to your heart's content. Hopefully your heart is content, but just in case it isn't, that is the solution. Now Chloe loves pink, so I'm going for about a teaspoon of some nice pink food colouring and, oh wow, that looks cool, doesn't it? Just leave it like that. <laughs> you could do that on the top of your fidget spinner if you wanted. Oh, the only other thing to remember is the pink is going to be your main coating, but not only will the white do the caps, generally you want to kind of use this as the glue to hold the pegs together. Oh, I'm just on the phone, literally, to the doctors. Don't worry, I'm fine. There's nothing to worry about. I'm still alive. Um, <laughs> just need to get it out of the oven. They're just done. In fact, damn you, doctors. Slightly browned around the edges. But to be honest, once they cool fully and firm up, the fact that they're slightly better done might make them stronger. Just add a little bit of ice in onto the caps like this. Do, do, do. And that will hopefully just settle, but the caps go first because they'll hold the pegs as we talked about. There we go, I've done a couple. Let me do all of these a minute. All right, fidget spinner, the pink ones are done. I used a wire rack at the back there just to let it drip dry. They do need to fully dry. They're not completely there yet. But what you need to do, uh, I've done one here, is get your peg. So you pick uh, one of the ones. Now these have really dried out. You really, really have to have them dry. Small bit on there. Ooh. Yeah, I got a bit excited then. And then we use that 
as a glue just like this one here to hold and bond the paint. Really need to let those dry out properly. If they start to tip over at first, just as they're setting, do help them a little bit. This is the first one I did and you should. Yes, look, <laughs> should be able to pick it up like that. Perfect. I, I'm really not enjoying the process of trying to get these bits on. Like, can you see that's just falling down as well? The main thing that Royal Icing needs is airflow and ventilation. Like these actual spinners are rock hard now because they've taken so long, but sometimes with these you have to hold them up. You can try. Ooh. But it blows them all away. This has been an absolute nightmare. I have to tell you, do not put them in the fridge. It's so important to get the ventilation in there, but that's taken an hour for that to be dry, but it's worth it because it's rock hard. If we try and put stuff on it before that, it will just wobble off and you'll particularly lose strength in your base bits here. So as long as I get one fidget spinner right now, that's all I care about, all right? I've got all these other ones just over there. I don't need those in my life. Just one is fine. I just want to prove that we can make it work. So that sits down on there. Oh wow, that's almost perfect. And I've got a cap here that I've got a little bit of icing on. I might put just a teeny bit more. Ooh. And I'm just gonna sit it on top. Oh, and let gravity do its thing. <gasps> now, as I know, if I leave it here, it's gonna take blooming ages, but going out into my garage, it'll get ventilation and it could be spinning within an hour in time for the school run. Wait, so, the things I do for my daughter. What are you doing It's now? blooming freezing out here. The garage is a really good place for it. I'm just making sure that this is setting on there. I still don't know if it's gonna work. They've just made one really good one. I swear. I actually tweeted at my friend Ivan Miranda, who's actually a Spanish YouTuber who makes massive 3D build. He did a tank, 3D printed, oh, wow. has said, I can make you a mold uh, so you can actually make sugar coated ball bearings to make an actual fidget spinner possible. So if this is sort of works and it's okay, I just broke the news to Mrs. B that I might go to Spain and meet him and do a collaboration. And, Okay. You're like, oh, we're going to go camping in a tent. You're going to Spain. Yeah, you go to Spain <laughs> for a few days. Yeah, I mean, we're only okay. filming for a day, but I've got to be there for four weeks, you know. You see, inside hey, there, they. those ball bearings. Yeah. What would you do with sugar ones? Yeah, he's got a mould that he can make to do that. I'm sure someone in England could do it, but... Oh, no, 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 definitely not. What's kind of happened is the icing has sealed it by... Uh, together, like that, you know? Uh. So... It's in there. I wonder if we just get a little knife and carve it off a bit because the icing has, has, has formed a big seal. Oh! <laughs> no! Well, let's not worry about that one. I mean, I don't know. Is it me thinking this? Or I, you know, Tasty do some really awesome stuff and I get why they want it to look. That's what she just did. Turn that around, mate. Turn that, show that. That's, what That's exactly doing. what they showed on the video. Yeah. It's well, that ain't like, fidget spinning, is it? No, it's just push, holding the two circles. Yeah, but visually. But it looks like it. Yeah. It's a trick of the camera. But this is the one where I made the hole bigger. And you can see there's a huge gap in there. So there is definitely the potential here. Yay! Hey, that's Yay, actually spins. spinning. So make the hole slightly bigger than that, but slightly smaller and make a bigger cap. We've actually done it. Woohoo! That actually is quite fast. I'm going to take that and give it to Chloe. And if not, we'll just get another one online, yeah? <laughs> that was a nightmare. Oh my gosh, folks, incredible update. I just did this off camera. So as you know, this was the big one that spins really, really well. Now, when we put that other cap on the top, it stuck. Some of the icing went down to the bottom. So I just carefully took a knife and took off that edge. Can you see that there? And it popped down. So this one has got, you know, a slightly less wider hole. And that is working, it's working! Oh my gosh! The oven has sort of been fixed. All the glass is there, it's more safe, we can open it, but the display, the touchscreen display is, is broken, so we haven't got the part for that. To avoid flashing clocks going on in the background, I'm gonna stick a fridge magnet over that for the next batch of videos. <laughs> At least it's safer in here. Anyhow! Hello! Hello! I'm an excited all day. Can't see anything. Right, ready? Yeah. Here you go. Oh no, it's gonna fall off. 
Ah! Oh, this is the best present ever. <laughs> best present ever. Oh, you just broke it. No. <laughs> no. They taste a bit like party rings. They do taste like party rings. Yeah, it's exactly the same concept. Mm, very interesting. So when people now say to you, Chloe, what happened to your fidget spinner? I ate it. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache goatee, maybe all three. 